Let's talk to Stephen Woodcock. He's an independent foreign exchange trader. Very good morning to you, Steve. Good morning, Nick. Right. Over the years, you've seen lots of things, um, and you've called the market so well um, coming on the show historically. What are your latest thoughts now? Uh, well, latest thoughts at the moment. Um, last couple of weeks been a bit stagnation. Yeah. Um, apart from the odd, the dollar itself isn't isn't seem uh, doesn't seem to be moving too much. Um, Sterling's stuck in its range. The euro is very uninteresting. You're having to look a little uh, a little further afield. We've seen a uh, a Canadian move over the last. Maybe last week, apparently there's a, someone said to me there's a big CAD-MEX trade going on, which um, could be the case, I'm not too sure, but I'm sure obviously since the US um, spoke of tariffs and their biggest trading partner is obviously Canada, uh, the Canadian dollar has weakened. So uh, I, I think at the moment, I think last time I was on, we, we are looking for something, I don't know what we're looking for. We seem to be being moved at the moment more politically yep. than, than technically and, and uh, you know, that sort of thing. So for the moment, looking for pointers, which, which don't seem to be coming at the moment. So, uh, but, the, you know, play the ranges at the moment, it's just short term trading. Um, that seems to be the way of it at the moment. But when markets go into sideways sort of consolidations, let's call them, right? Is it best not to trade at all? It can be. It can be best just to leave it alone. Look, look, you know, keep your levels. You've got your levels there. You can listen on your systems there. You can set up so many alarms, phone alarms, everything to tell you when we come outside of ranges. But if you're a range trader, it's it's perfect. If you're a range trader. You know, the common sense trade works in these markets. You know, you sell the resistance, you buy the support. But isn't it psychologically okay? You get a trading range and you're always trying to trade the breakout as opposed to buying, buying the low, selling the highs. Well, sorry to go back onto the Canadian again. There was actually that, that exact thing happened yesterday where we had the Canadian or the dollar Canadian broke down below. It was sitting between 50, one, uh, one, uh, 28, 50, 60 yesterday. And uh, it, it didn't know which way it wanted to go. And it, what it did, it took the stops out towards the downside. And sh there were some new entries going in and whatever. And immediately bounced back and was firm. Dollar CAD was firm all day long. The Canadian is weakening at the moment. And uh, like you say, that is one of those typical where, you know, oh, you, there's the alarm. The level broke. And it, we come back and it bites you. Um, but... That is the market. What can you do in, in these situations, you know? I mean, I always say to people, look, in these situations, maybe stay flat, have a look around. That's, it's the time to go and look at all your charts. Yep. It's not the time to maybe make something happen it, it's, or try and make something happen. But it's, it's the time where you, 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 you go and look at, you know, you might have 50 charts that you look at periodically, you yep. know, and... and uh, Spend some time on those charts in all the different time frames. And I mean, myself, I do five minutes, 15 minutes, hour, day, week, month. And I know that sounds dull to anyone who's not in this sort of uh, this, this market. But, uh, but that's what, what you do now. It's do a bit of homework. Do, you know, have a look at everything that's going on. And maybe start reading a bit more. See, you know, get the, the finer parts of stories that you've just glossed over. Yep. Um, that's and, sensible. And, Going back to dollar yen, you've historically made some fantastic calls on that. Any thoughts with dollar yen around these levels? Well, you know, my, I, I mean, I actually, I think the last part of the dollar yen call went totally wrong. Okay, which which, which was fine for me. I mean, I I, I trade with stops, so I I didn't get hurt, uh, anything like that. But I've got to admit, I uh, towards the end of last year, I thought I did think we were going to see dollar uh, dollar yen and the well the yen weaken across the board, um, but uh, that didn't seem to happen and. More of, I think, more of a dollar trade than, than, than anything trade, else. Yep. Well, I know there were, you know, situations put in place that, that maybe did strengthen the yen a tad. But, uh, but I, I still, still think that this 105, 106 area um, is, is good support for dollar yen. It's the same again. You, you know, you get to this situation where you, you've got your levels. I'm very aware of this area. Um, is, this is historically as well. I mean, I've been in the market now for getting on for 35 years and, and you know, we always do work here at 105. It, that's, that's just one of those numbers, you know. And uh, so I, I, I'm watching it very closely. Um, and my wife keeps saying to me, why are you looking at that now? You know, things like that. So what have you got your phone out for? So this know? really is a, a big level historically. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a big pivot level and, and it could be, you know, what it does around here can can maybe give us the direction for maybe the next 
say, 15, 20 big figures. Right. Um, so it, it's it's watching the price action as well. That's See, the thing is, is that what I do, I, I'm, I'm very, very... I'm I'm quite uh, aggressive when it comes to price action. I it means a lot to me, and I, and and if I miss something, it really like if I come back to a chart and say it's done the move or it's done something, I, it it really annoys me because I I like to know how it traded at that situation. Right. So actually, go. I think it goes back a lot to maybe I used to trade a lot of overnight with dollar yen, and and I've been there for probably all the big dollar yen moves overnight and when you're there when you, you come in the following morning into European hours you see something that's moved massively and yeah you can see where the low's been see where the, the high's been and but n nothing can tell you what it what it did yeah you have to be there and feel what went yep. on and and that's I mean a lot of my trading is, is it's gut feel and uh, sometimes rightly sometimes wrongly you know sometimes I tend to ignore little bits that I shouldn't have done. Um, but uh, it, it's just the experience. It's, that's, that's where I am, you know. But, um, yeah, that's... Steve, on that note, we've run out of time. Okay. Thought-provoking, as always. Um, 105, the big level in dollar-yen. Steve, thanks.